Hey, what's going on guys? In this video, I'm going to make this thing work with this thing on the inside with this thing. So basically what I have is an air compressor. Obviously, if you guys can read, you know what that is. And this can be set up for car tires or bike tires or other stuff. And I found this in my Camaro. It was just there. I'm guessing it was for flat tire repair or something. But it has, it's used just for cars. So this goes into the car accessory port or the cigarette lighter and it makes this run. Problem is, it would be nice to be able to use this in other places such as inside the house. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm going to take this charger, splice the end, put it onto this, plug it into the wall, and make this work anywhere. There is a product that you can use that they make pre-made, I'm sure they're from China, you plug this into a socket that goes directly into the wall. I'll link that down below if you want to do the cheater way, but I will link this, which I got on Amazon for a few dollars. Basically what this is, is I got it as close to the specifications as possible that a cigarette lighter would be. This is 12 volt 2 amp, so pretty much what a normal cigarette lighter would be. So I've got this, so it takes all of that magical electricity from the wall, tones it down a little bit, goes down the cord and into whatever this would charge. I think this is like for security cameras. But I'm gonna chop this off because this is no use to me. I'm gonna chop this off. I'm gonna get the positive and the negative from here and I'm gonna connect it onto the cigarette lighter. So hopefully this shouldn't be too hard. The only problem I might have, I have not done this before, you are learning with me, is this top portion this is the positive and these are the negative leads i'm not sure if i need two negatives touching this at the same time and i'm not sure if this needs to be depressed for it to work so uh, i'm going to find out and you're going to learn with me okay so first thing i did was i chopped off the end so now you've got your positive and your negative here now i'm going to separate these out and of course my camera is going to focus on the background because it hates me and then I'm going to strip both these wires. And this is what it's gonna look like when it's done. I just stripped these back enough to where I have room to work. But I have encountered my first problem. If you take a look, you can see that these two wires are separated. One has lines through them and one doesn't. So that's helpful maybe to the people that were producing this but it's not helpful to me because I do not know which one is positive and which one's negative for this. So I am going to use my tester to figure this out. So I'm gonna plug this into the wall and obviously if you're doing this, do not touch these wires, do not touch these wires together, don't put these wires on anything if you're going to test this. So plug this into the wall and these become live. So don't F around with this. Okay, so I have this plugged into the wall right now in a different outlet, and I have my wire testers here on voltage, positive and negative, red and black, like you usually would. And what you have to do here, since this is a 12 volt, like I showed you in the beginning of the video, you put one of the leads on one side, and then one of the leads on the other side, and if the reading comes out to be positive 12 volts, then you know that the red one that's set on the wire is going to be your positive and the black one is going to be your negative. If you set it on the wires and it comes out to be negative 12 volts, then you know it's the opposite. So the wire that you have on the black one is actually the positive and reverse on the other side. So that's how I'm going to figure out which one's positive and which one's negative. So it looks like it's positive 12 volts for this. And I'll show you what it looks like if it's negative 12 volts if I have these reversed. See how there's a negative, if I can even get 12 volts, there it is. There's a negative in the left-hand side right there. So now I know that this one is positive and this one is negative. So the one with the striped lines 
is going to be my negative, and the one that's solid is going to be my positive. All right, so here is my first test. I have my negative, just one, to the negative side, and I have my positive just touching, wrapped around the positive side. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip the switch over here and see if it works. I've got this plugged in right here with the kill switch just in case I need it. So both of these are touching. Let's see if this works. So it looks like it kind of works. So the next thing I'm gonna do, hit my kill switch so this isn't active anymore. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to split the wire so I have two separate negatives so both of these are touching and see if that stops it from whatever it's doing, either not getting enough or it's cycling, I don't know what it's doing. So that's my next step. I'm gonna put both of these as negatives. So I got some spare wire and I stripped the end of it and I connected both of the negatives or the grounds and connected them to this side. This is all just temporary to see if this works. I'll make it look pretty later. Focus camera. And now I'm going to put the positive onto the top and uh, yeah, see if this works out any better. All right, live. This works, round two. No. So it looks like that is not the problem. So I can use one if I want to, or two. So now I have to figure out why it's cycling like that. So this did not work for me because I made a mistake and assumed that this air compressor was going to take two amps. But what you guys need to do is check the output. It's usually gonna be on the little plug that goes in here or it'll be listed somewhere on the air compressor. This one has absolutely no output, no input reads, nothing. So I totally guessed on this one and from what you saw, it was just cycling really slowly. It wasn't getting enough, so that's why it was going slow. But you should be looking for the output so you know how many amps, because we, we know 12 volts. These are all 12 volts for the car cigarette lighter. We just don't know how many amps. And for my case, I really don't know how many amps this thing is supposed to take to run. I assumed it was two, but I don't have anything to go off of, so this didn't work. If you find the correct output on your air compressor or any other device that you want to do this method to, check the output and get a matching output, 12 volts, if it's 3 amps or 4 amps or 10 amps. It'll never go above 10 amps because that's what the fuse is set on in your car. 10 amps, uh, some cars do 15, but that's not important. 10 amps is as high as you want to go. Um, so if you're like me and you don't know how high it's supposed to go, I will be using this guy right over here. This is my car charger. I use this in my scooter video, which is, oh God, where is he at? A little scooter over there. I use that in my scooter video to charge the batteries to see if the batteries were dead or not. But this tops out at 8 amps. Um, it's a smart charger, so it can go below 8 amps if needed, which is perfect for this because I have no idea how many amps it's supposed to take. So this is a method you can use. I don't suggest doing this one just because it's not as clean. I have to use clamps to hook this together to get this to work. Um, like I said, if I had, if I know how many amps, I'll definitely get another one of these. They're usually, the higher amperage ones are usually, uh, like laptop chargers. So, I just want to get this thing working in the house without plugging this into the car and using this for, like, say, a basketball. I don't want to go to my car to fill up a basketball, or I don't want to get my scooter all the way down to my car and scoot it up and, you know, fill up the tires. 
So, long story short, we're going to get this thing working by getting the negative wire. And like I said before, we're going to put the negative wire on the negative terminal on the side. And then we're going to get the positive and put it on the front. So that's how it's going to look. It's pretty, right? You just want this laying around your house. Awesome. So that's how it's going to look. And I've got, where is it at? There it is. I've got this set on standby. It's not on yet. I'm going to hit the on switch. It's still plugged in. So now I've got power going through here. And we just need to flip the switch. And it works. So once you get the proper charger and then you can wrap it around and make it look pretty, it will definitely work.